What's happening? This is Earl Winfrey with Party Update TV. Now I'm here with the one and only Mr. John Moultrie. Now the reason I chose this interview is because I've been doing John Moultrie for what? 20, 30 years? Oh, I really only want to say how long it's been. But let's go way, way back, John. Let's talk about you and the Jazz Oasis. Tell us a little about that, how that came to be, and how it ended up sadly ending. How it all started was that I was dating a girl, and um, we were trying to find a place to go out. And unfortunately, we didn't have any place. So uh, I, because of her, I decided that I wanted to open it up for her. That's how it started. Now, 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 now the Jazz Oasis, for a moment, was like a really big success. Now tell me how that come to be. Well, I think because there were very few options in the early 90s, um, and you know we were a, a jazz club that kind of closely brought in artists that were related to the uh, old former WNUA uh, playlist that was out there. So we were bringing in people like you know Brian McKnight, um, you know Mesa, Art Porter, Kirk Whalum, George Howard, and so on and so forth. So we were bringing in those kind of acts. Plus. You know, I, I really think that it took the place of the old Georges that were probably 15, 20 years earlier that actually, um, you know, they were bringing in the bigger names then for African Americans. And it was just a big thing for us at that time. The club, what would you say was the most memorable experience you had at that club? Because I know you have some incredible stories, and I want to just hear just one of them. Because you've told me a thousand, but I want to share one with, with our audience so, here. I, I, I'll tell you this one in particular. You know, Brian McKnight came uh, in from... Um, take six and I didn't know who Brian McKnight was so I get a call from uh, APA and they said we got this guy that's left take six his name is Brian McKnight would you bring him in and I said he's traveling with um, Everett Harp and I said uh, okay well I, I like Everett Harp but I don't know this Brian McKnight guy you don't know who Brian McKnight is all right okay <laughs> so um, so Brian so I said okay I'll take him and I said well how much is this gonna cost they said thirteen hundred dollars I said for the whole night, and they said, yeah. <laughs> Brian McKnight, thirty hundred bucks. I said, okay, well, I guess Brian is worth his, you know, half of that. So we can half of that. So what I did was I said, well, guys, you know, I went to my team and I told them it was going to be, you know, ten bucks, and I just said, you know, we'll either sell advance tickets or we'll do something, but we don't know how this is going to go, and it's a Saturday night, and we already had, we knew we were going to do pretty good business anyway, but this may be pretty good, so. Um, needless to say, we announced it, and people started buying advance tickets. Now, me, the entrepreneur that you know that I was, I'm like, oh my God, these people are buying these tickets. This right, is right. great. <laughs> now, mind you, the Jazz Oasis only set 99 people. Right, that was okay. the occupancy <laughs> okay. standing room. We were probably about at 200, uh -huh. you know, or somewhere like that. And you know, and we squeezed the other people in there too, because right. you know, again, we were right, trying to make right, that right, money. Right. Well, needless to say, we had two shows. The first show sold out like in two hours. I said, who the heck is this? In, in two hours. In two hours. I said, well, who is this Brian McKnight? Right, right. So my, my, I didn't put any controls on it, so they kept selling tickets. So the first show was about uh, a little over 200 people. Okay. And I said, well, we have to default people to the second show. Right, right, right. And um, so that, w that went well and uh, because we actually sold out and that went the following hour. Well, you know, I'm thinking to myself, well, this is great. So just right before they got there that day, I got a call from the tour guy, and he said that uh, that Everett Hart got sick, got food poisoning in Detroit. Okay. So they said, oh, Brian is going to gonna do the show. And I said, that's fine. And, um, and he'll do the second show. I said, okay, that's fine. Or he said, we can just do one big show and then be done with it. I said, well, well let's, just, let's do the two shows and it would be all right. Well, anyway, long story short, we get there and everybody arrives early. There's a line out the building. Out down, the building. Down the street. Down the street. And we had not opened the doors yet. <laughs> so everybody gets in there. And uh, next thing I know, uh, everyone's crammed in there. And I'm thinking, okay, well, this is great. Well, Brian doesn't want to do the other show. He thinks he wants to do his one show. And that's it. And that's it because Everett was there and they were supposed to do a 90 minute show and right. you know and all and he said no nah, I don't want to do it that way and I'm thinking okay so needless to say Doug Banks and there were a lot of celebrities in the house so Doug Banks and everybody they piled behind this giant bar that we had and um, I didn't know what was going on because when Brian got on I noticed in the crowd that people were like you know their eyes were closed and they were fainting or, or something <laughs> they were, they were fainting. 
I didn't know what was going on. So, and I'm like, I'm looking and, and, and next thing, you know, I'm thinking, wow, this is amazing that, you know, these people are reacting this way. I mean, guys were fainting and women were fainting. Yeah. Guys were fainting. So I said to myself, I said, damn, I, I don't want to look at this cat in the eye because I don't want to fall out myself. And I was like looking at Doug, and um, Doug was, you know, and I was like, I'm not going to look at Brian McKnight. <laughs> well, I, I didn't realize that as we filed out for that first show, that the air conditioning had gone out. <laughs> Hot as hell up in there. And, and people were just crushed right, right. that everyone was, and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, I can right, see it right, right now. Right, right. And uh, so uh, it was just a crazy experience, but uh, I had to convince Brian, I had to pay him another, you know, $1,300 right, to do right, the right, other right, show, right, right. but it was worth it. But well, I know uh, he packed the house. He packed the house right, and uh, right, right. and actually they ended up doing three shows that night, uh, but it was a really good, you know, good experience, but I, I just couldn't believe it though. That's crazy. You know what, I bet you take your Brian now for $1,300. Yeah, well, you know, you can't do anything for bribing night for $1,300.